thank you guys for tuning in and watching the Buffalo Fanatics. If you guys like what you see and you like the videos and the content that we provide, click every link in this description or go to the IG page, go to the Facebook page, but most importantly, keep tuning in on YouTube. If you guys like the merch, www.bffanshop.com. And if most importantly, you want to join the Fanatic team, the Bing team, www.jointhefanatics.com. I'll see you then. It's your boy and I'm gone. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Rico back at it again with another segment of questions of the week brought to you by none other than the Bing Squad asking all the questions, dropping comments, you name it. Now, you're probably wondering, what the heck is this questions of the week and how can I be part of it? It's simple. Join the fanatics.com. Period. Oh, by the way, I'm wearing BF merch. And you're trying to get one of your sweaters, you're trying to get one of these tees, you're trying to do anything that has anything to do with the Buffalo. People, without further ado, let's get to the heated questions. Let's go. Number one on my list, Scott Blakely. Scott Blakely comes up with a banger. With Baltimore showing that blitzing will render success against our O-line complementing man coverage, how are we going to combat this against the damn Steelers? It's obvious to me that the blueprint is out. Jet sweeps, screens, and quick hitches with Beasley need to challenge the blitz packages. That's his opinion. Perhaps some old-fashioned draws as well. Here's the deal, Mr. Blakely. You're right. We've got to learn how to counter the blitz and i'm sure of it that dable has plays just for that but the problem becomes are we executing right we all have to be on the same page we all have to and exact this is what the ravens did to us they said here's the deal we are going to bring the blitz and not only we're going to bring the blitz we're going to bring the blitz knowing that my db is better than your receiver and it was very clear very clear especially when it came down to the last play of our series the last possession we went we went against marcus peters and guess what marcus peters won that battle but what it comes down to is this if allen can't identify these blitzes or he's not reacting quick enough that's on allen he's not executing dable can call all the plays he wants and put him in the right position but if allen is not executing these plays that falls on our quarterback our leader now they're bringing more guys than we can block Allen, check out of it. Allen, you know what I mean? Kill this or hot read, hot read. Do something. You can't hold on to the ball. You took unnecessary sacks. It just wasn't a good game for Allen. It happens. Now, this is a learning lesson. He's learning. He's still learning. And guess what? This is the exact same thing that happened to us against the defense. The Eagles tore a strip into us. Over 200 damn yards rushing. It was bad. It was really bad. Right? What do we do? We fix the issue. Team started noticing, wait a minute, they're a little soft up the gut. Let's start running all over them. We fix the issue. So what do you think we got to do with the offense? We're going to have to fix the issue. And it starts with Dable. Dable is not without blame here. You've got to see that your quarterback is struggling at receiving the blitz. He doesn't know. He's, he's panicking. He's not knowing what to do. He wants to flush out of the pocket. And that's exactly what they did. They made him fall into their plan. We've got to be better. He's got to have more poise in the pocket. Hang on to that ball just a little longer if you need to, your guys to clear. That's just my opinion. But, Scott, you're not wrong, man. we got to start utilizing everything, right? I think we were doing the best we could, but we just got out coached. Sometimes it comes down to it. We got out coached, uh, and they prepared well, well, much more than, than, than we prepared for this game, offensively speaking. Scott Blakely, appreciate that, my G. Appreciate it. We got Barry Cumberbatch, my guy, my island brother. Defensively, he says, Pittsburgh brings a lot of the same things that we saw from Baltimore. Our offense needs to take what the defense gives us, and to me, it's about attacking the blitzes. Allen has to recognize, oh, this is a long one. Allen has to recognize those blitzes, and our RBs have to pick up the free blitzers so we can attack the areas to try to keep the front seven honest. And please, 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 he says, no deep passes when the game is on the bounce because we, we're wasting precious downs on those plays we don't connect on them only times we should attempt them in the game is if there's a busted coverage or the receivers 40 40 yards downfield 
because that's the only way Allen connects deep. Then, the, then they can't overthrow the receivers. But we need good pass protection. Perhaps if we want to add deep routes to this game plan, they they should be deep crossing routes because Allen will have an easier time connecting on those. All right. Damn, that was a mouthful. Pause. Uh, here's the deal, Mr. Cumberbatch. We can't not throw the deep balls. And if we're only if we're doing if we're only throwing deep balls on specific things, man, teams are gonna read that up, man. We can't do that, my brother. But you do make a point. If you see that it's not working, let's try to find some let's try to find solutions that is going to help Allen, right? Put him in position. That's where Dable comes in. If you see that he's struggling, you gotta give him something that's gonna get him warmed up and seeing things easier. But it seems that we were trying to just make the make the plan work regardless of what they bring to the field. And if they're blitzing, guess what? Run that damn play regardless. But your quarterback is struggling. So you've got to find a way to freaking figure that out. Uh, so Barry, I'm with you, right? But at the same time, we're gonna be we're gonna become too predictable. We can't do that. We gotta keep teams on their heels, right? And that's how we have more success. When we keep teams on their heels, not knowing what we're gonna do, it's gonna work. Here's the thing. How about we start giving the damn ball to Singletary and more often? He was the best player on the field last game. Screens. Anything that gets him the ball. Get him out of receiver. We almost had him. We almost had him on a deep route. We just missed it. We just missed it. But, Barry, I see what you're saying, brother. We're going to get better. It's going to come. And we got three more games to make it happen, man. So, we'll see. We'll see. Barry Cumberbatch, my guy. Appreciate that. Chris Spencer. It looks like we have Chris Spencer agreeing with Scott Blakely. He says, listen, man, I agree with Scott Blakely. We need to see if Josh can identify the blitz thrown at us, and also Dable needs to needs some play packages that we can call six in a row if need be if we go no huddle. Quick outlets for Josh in times of nonstop pressure. Um, screens and jet sweeps is a must to help uh, help with pressure and forcing defense's eyes to be slightly occupied to give Josh some time. It's a, it's here's the thing, man. Baltimore said, "Listen, I'm blitzing your ass." And there's nothing you can do about it because I know my corners are going to eat your receivers up. And we had no answer for it. And it was very, it was, it was, it was evident. Our last possession, where we turned the ball over, we went one-on-one -on -one with Marcus Peters. And Marcus Peters knew, knew exactly what was coming. Guys, if you've ever played football, the DB, if it's zero coverage, meaning we're man-to-man, one-on-one, -on -one, the rule for a DB is thou shall never let the receiver inside. Don't let him inside. And that's exactly what happened, man. Marcus Peter was like, nah, son, I got you. I got you. I would have went to McKenzie. McKenzie was on the other side with the DB with on, on off coverage. Man, you got to hit that, man. You can't go with the tight coverage. But guess what? He went to the guy he trusts the most, his number one receiver. And you can't be mad at that. You can't be mad at that. Your number one receiver, your best receiver, you got to go for him and hope he makes, the, he, makes the, he makes the play. But Marcus Peters was all over that shit. All over that shit like white on rice. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, um, my guy, Chris Spencer, I feel you, brother. I feel you. Mike Solo says, Rico, my guy, I've been saying this for a minute now, man. We need a main. We need our main man, Duke effing Williams. It's time to break him out and let him eat. We need a different threat in the receiving game. What are your thoughts on that? Oh, man. I like Duke. You guys already know, man. Duke is my guy. But you bring him in, you got to create a package for him if you're going to do it. Um, so who are you replacing? Who are you taking out? You're going to add a, another receiver to the mix. Um, now one argument can be made. Our tight ends are really not doing it right. They have splash plays here and there, but they're not consistent. Maybe put in some packages for my man at the tight end position. Now I was against this all off season. I say he's a big boy. Put him on the wide. Nobody can handle him. He's too big. He'll muscle you down. But, man, we are getting inconsistent play from Dawson Knox. So why not put Duke Williams at tight end? I hate it, but, shit, you got to do what you got to do. Uh, but we're going to find out. I don't think they're going to activate him. But if you see that they do, it's because they're sick of someone. Someone is not pulling their weight, and that's when you'll see Duke Williams. So we're going to have to wait on that. I doubt it's going to happen, but we're going to have to wait on that. Great question. Uh, Raymond Peterson. Raymond. What's going on, Raymond? Ray says this, it's time for, time for some old school football. The guys are ready and they have the mindset. Defense is on point, but the offense is, is a little behind. Is it time for a multi-back set uh, to really counter what these other teams are doing? 
multi-back sets yeah i mean sure why not right give teams different looks so they have to really pay attention to like who's around i get it um but we don't have the i mean the big uh threatening backs in the backfield we got singletary and we got the aging gore and yeldon when well, you want to bring yeldon back in i don't think it's going to happen we're just going to have to get used to one guy running the rock majority of the time and that's singletary and the guy just gets better with every damn touch that he gets just give the damn rock to singletary let him lead the way Allen will then let the game come to him and hopefully we catch our stride with three games remaining we take down the Steelers we take down the Pats and we take down the Jets and then call it a day let's get this thing going I'm just saying man we can make it happen it's possible Scott Blake comes back with another one he says hey in my opinion most of the offensive issues are execution by players banger that's exactly what it is with the occasional bad table calls yes Scott Blake that's two points you just made that's great unfortunately for me fortunate for others Dable will be the candidate for a head coach remember Dable came in with no weapons and then a reboot of the entire offense I think the progress we're seeing is in the result of the team execution being higher they're not ready last week they weren't ready last week and for this blitz rate but they will be against the Pittsburgh hmm Dable as a head coach candidate this is exactly what they said last year he could be a head coach candidate uh, at the near the end of the season. They were trying to say that, right? Um, even at the beginning of the year, head coach candidate. I don't know about that, man. You just look at my man's track record uh, as an offensive coach. Um, I can't see it, but stranger things have happened. There are coaches right now that are in head coach positions that are some buns. They're ass. So could Dable get an opportunity? I'm sure he could. He's got a lot of friends all over the league. This, this, this league is about hooking your friends up sometimes and sometimes detrimental to the team right you bring in your buddies and because you're comfortable with who's coaching with you and voila right look what mcdermott did mcdermott brings in dennison i don't know whether they were friends or not but that was not a great look whatsoever and we quickly shipped his ass out so uh sometimes it's the case but in this case does dable become an offensive uh excuse me does he become a head coach uh we'll see um but if he does i think we'll be just fine with ken dorsey taking over I'm just saying, right? Um, so we'll see, man. We'll see. We'll see how that goes down. Thank you for that, Scott Blakely. Bo the Barber. This is much of a statement. Singletary needs to be featured a lot more in this offense. Done. Bo the Barber, get right to the point. I agree. Make him the feature guy. You started to see it last game. Singletary was running the rock. He was pass blocking. And he was catching the rock. And they're making him a focal point, which I really love. So you're going to see a lot more Singletary in this Sunday night game. And I think that's what's going to be great for this team. That's going to be great for Allen. The pressure is, is taking off of Allen. And then he can just relax and perform. But when the pressure's on, Allen starts to falter, especially with the blitz right in his face. I mean, the pressure was all the way on on Thursday night against Dallas Cowboys. And he performed great. But it's the Dallas Cowboys. And the Dallas Cowboys are swirling out of control. So was that a fluke or was that on the money? We're about to find out Sunday night again with a very good defense of the Steelers. Let's see what Allen brings to the table. But let's not do that to him. Give the rock to Singletary. Let him take the pressure off and then we'll pick and choose what we do. Right? That defense is good. But I trust our, de I trust our defense to keep them at bay, which gives us more opportunities and we'll make something happen. That's just what it is, man. We're going duck hunting. <laughs> duck, duck, duck hunting. All right? So let's make this happen. We got Scott Devereaux. I know we have four losses, but why hasn't McDermott garnered any coach of the year consideration? Fair question. Because we haven't beat anybody that is really a prominent team. If you really think about it, right? Think about it right now. The team that we beat with a winning record of the Tennessee Titans, they're, they're, they're really playing well right now. And the Dallas Cowboys, and they're not. Everyone else... We, we just, we're, we're doing what we're supposed to do. We barely got away in Miami. We barely got away against the Jets. We barely got away, I mean, against the uh, the Bengals. Um, so a lot of these close games that, that we're, we're playing, we're barely getting away, but we come away with a W. Now, if we took down the Ravens and we take down the Patriots next week and we take down the, and the Steelers, we have a very good opportunity to get him back in the loop of becoming a candidate for coach of the year now i'll tell you this right now 
does he deserve to be coach of the year right now or a candidate? Not right now. He hasn't earned it, but he's definitely a hot coach. He just needs to string a few more wins together. His team needs to get him on top, and he's got to have his name in that little raffle, or he's got to have his name in that hat. But right now, he's not there. He's just not there. Just my opinion. Just my opinion. What is the one thing that we can change by Sunday to get more points on the board? That comes from Andrew Krantz. That's a fantastic question. One thing that we can change on Sunday to get more points on the board. Execute. Execution, man. That's the problem. If you go look back at the damn film of us against the Ravens, man, that we left so much plays on the field. Listen, if you guys look at the damn chat and go through the comment section, the Ravens fans are insufferable. Just talking a whole bunch of shit, right? Rightfully so. But man, a few plays that we connect on, the game is a completely different game because now Allen can now control the clock and do what he's got to do. And Jackson has got to play from behind, right? Something that his team has not done in a long time. So we would have had a great advantage and our defense was humming that game, but we did not execute. How are we going to execute? Catch the freaking balls, man. Catch the balls. You see an audible, make an audible, make a change, man. This is 14 games into the season. You have the right to do it. Dable has been saying it. You have every right to make the play and change it. So do it, Allen. Get in your books. That's what it comes down to at one point. But at the end of the day, in my opinion, it is all about execution. You don't execute. <laughs> You're giving the ball back to the damn opposition. It's just what it is, right? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Andrew Krantz, fantastic question, brother. Thomas Falzone has a damn good question. He says, what would have been one of the one or two adjustments to the Ravens game plan that could have won us the game last Sunday? One or two adjustments. Um, I think we abandoned the run. We started off running the ball and then we abandoned the run a little bit. Uh, I think we could have stuck to the run. I think we could have added a little bit more screens to the running back, right? When you get a lot of pressure, you have a team that's super aggressive. You take the aggressiveness away by dumping off a nice screen play. Not a receiver screen, especially when they're playing one-on-one, -on -one, right? You're one-on-one -on -one in tight coverage, a receiver screen, I don't like it too much. I'm not I'm not a big fan of that. But a nice running back screen here, maybe a tight end screen, right? Little things like that, misdirection, um, a lot of things that we didn't do, right? An aggressive defense, you've got to counter that, right? Hot reads. We didn't do enough enough hot reads, in my opinion. They're blitzing, they're blitzing, audible at the line. Hot read, man. Another thing, when you're going to blitz all day long, it's okay to go no huddle. We did no huddle a couple times. We had some success. But two major ones I would have done um, were to, A, don't, ad no, don't abandon the run too much. Don't abandon the run. I think we abandoned and we came back to it, which was nice. Um, and I think with an aggressive defense, I don't think we took advantage of, of hitting the hot routes um, and, and doing running back screens. That's just my opinion. Um, but there was a few things. I mean, punting was atrocious. It was really good at one point. And then we gave him a short field. But I don't want to get back into the game. But those are the two adjustments I would have made offensively because that's where we lacked, right? We couldn't handle the blitz, so we didn't adjust. We did not adjust. So those are the two, those are the two adjustments I would have made. That's just me, though. Uh, great question, though. Great, great, great question. M. Scott Blakely come with another one. He says, hey, not that you're not. Thomas Falzone says, not that you're looking for my opinion, but I do not believe Croft is the answer at tight end. Remember, he was touted as the receiving tight end and Lee the blocking tight end. We should cut our losses on both, activate Sweeney, and finish the year with two rookies. Then assess next year for possible upgrade position. Ooh, we. So you are not wrong with that, Scott Blakely. And I like it. Sweeney and Dawson Knox had good rapport all offseason long with Allen. Then Croft enters the game. And Croft has been non-existent non-existent and i i was a little harsh on twitter and you guys remember my live show i was like yo we paying this man six million dollars and you tell me that you can't beat out dawson knox and overrun and take that damn starting position you're letting him get 70 percent of the damn snaps something's wrong with this picture so guess what if your quarterback is, does have no rapport with tyler croft the six million dollar tight end shoot man find a way to put him on ir or deactivate him and put Sweeney in and see if there's a difference. Because right now, I don't think there's any trust or there's no chemistry with Croft. So why have him on the damn field, right? 
get Sweeney in. Sweeney's not a bad blocker whatsoever, and they seem to have built a rapport over the offseason. So Sweeney, Dawson Knox, both rookies back in there. Shit, it's youth. There's a lot of youth. But damn, man, Croft ain't doing it. Croft ain't doing it. So we might have no choice but to try it. You got to try something. Golly, man, we got to make this playoff, man. We got to get this damn win. Do it however we can. Straight up. Great question. Scott Blake with another one. Ryan Sealback. I see us winning out. What do you think? I definitely see us winning out. We can definitely beat the Steelers. We can definitely beat the damn Patriots with the offensive woes that they've been having. And we can definitely take the Jets. We definitely can win out. And it'd be a lovely thing, man. It would be lovely. But we got to start with one. Win and we're in against the Steelers. I still have a bad taste in my mouth. The last time that we needed to get into the playoffs, we had to play the Steelers. And they had the backups in. They had Tommy Maddox. Do you remember that? Tommy Maddox, and they had fast Willie Parker, and they killed us. They killed us, and they dashed our hopes to make the playoffs. So we need to get them some payback and beat the Steelers, get our 10th win, and clinch that damn playoff berth, right? Clinch a damn playoff spot, and then we can we can work on trying to take the division and hope that the Patriots start to lose out, and they really punish the hell out of them for recording shit. What you recording for, man? That shit is bananas to me. Y'all got hit real hard last time, and now you sitting here, oh, we're doing a documentary, and we just needed to, but I'm going to spend eight minutes on the sideline watching the damn Bengals. The Bengals. You tripping? What you watching the Bengals for, man? Come on, man. If you want to cheat. <laughs> Not with the Bengals. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Hey, those are the Patriots. Those are the Patriots. Uh, Next one. Chris Spencer says, Rico. Nearly all our players in are in high rotation. Would it be stupid to be... Okay. Chris Spencer. Brother. Rico. Nearly all our players are in high rotation. Would it be stupid to maybe sprinkle in Barkley in there when Josh is struggling to maybe give Josh a different perspective of how to maybe adjust in times where he is struggling? I know the both QBs would get the same calls, but it may be nice for Josh to see what type of checks or audibles that might uh, that Matt might use in situations where Josh cannot seem to find an answer? Or do you think that it wouldn't be efficient and that's something too far out there? Rico, thoughts, Mafia. Here are my thoughts. Listen, Chris Spencer, you know I respect you, bro. But that, no bueno. No, 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 no. Do you, do you understand the ramifications? The ramifications if they put in my man Matt Barkley, Bitcoin Barkley, and... Allen is sitting there on the sideline just watching. Bro, the media would have a frenzy with that. All right. And forget about the media being involved. I just don't like it. I just don't like it. You leave the man in and he's got to learn. That's why Barkley is on the sideline. So when he comes back, they both look at their little, their little, the little pictures and they go through and say, this is what you missed. This is what you could do. And that's that. That's what's happening. Uh, that's why we have a veteran backup quarterback there so they can talk it through it and then we're on top of that we got ken dorsey we don't need to sprinkle in barkley nowhere chris spencer lay off the drugs <laughs> still respect you though i still respect you my g i do uh courtney james my brothers and sisters should the bills be oh my goodness courtney james what's going on with y'all man my brothers and sisters should the bills fire oc dable after the season if so who should the bills hire do you think another OC will slow down Josh Allen learning curve because it uh, because it would be his second OC? Okay, fire Dable. Why? 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 Guys, it's okay to say that Allen is fucking up. It's okay to say that Allen is messing up. It's okay. You can't always try to fire the OC. I was with you. I was once there. But once I realized that, wait a second, let's put the onus on the damn quarterback. Is the quarterback doing what he's supposed to do? Oh, no, he's not. So it's not the OC. You got to execute. If I put something out there, put a game plan, I want you to do exactly what I told you. Don't freestyle it. Or if you missed it, you better not miss it again. Let's go. So execution, not firing the damn OC. Come on now. I was once with you. Now, let me play the devil's advocate. Maybe... Dable's holding Allen back. And we need another OC that can really bring out the Allen that really truly should be there. Now, what OCs are out there that could do it? On the top of my head, I can't think of anything. But that's something that we could discuss at another moment. Let's watch these last three games. Let's see. 
you never know if he doesn't do what he's supposed to do the last three games and we offensively are putting out a poor performance then that's something that we should definitely look into but right now no we're not firing oc brian Hill. last but not least my man max kamani max kamani says this is it time to give croft more time and see if he can be the tight end we need while knox is still building consistency I have to lean back on that like bad joke. Here we go. Back in it. You think that Croft would have taken over by now, but he hasn't. So something is holding him back. And Dawson is doing something that they clearly like. Dawson brings great athletic ability onto the field, but so does Tyler Croft in a way. So, and he's known for that. There's a big body, can run. So what is the deal? That's the big question that I have. Why isn't Croft taking over for Dawson Knox, especially with the struggling that Dawson Knox has had with his hands. That's a great question. Should they start sprinkling in Croft? Should they start potentially forcing him in there and forcing something to happen? I'd like to see something, but right now he is not worth the six million that we're giving him. So let him gain his opportunity. But golly, if he's not beating out Dawson Knox, then there's a problem. There's a problem. And we're going to find out the next three games what the hell happens. Are they going to deactivate him and say it's not working out? Are they going to get him more involved in the game? Or are they just waiting to say, you know what, it's not working out, see you later? That, we will wait until the off season. And ladies and gentlemen, that is that. This video was longer than I anticipated for it to be. But sometimes you got to do what you got to do and read the questions. Because some of these questions, actually a lot of these questions are great. I had a couple, a couple duds in there. But it's all good. The point is... You ask the questions, we put it on video, and we get it going, and we get it popping. So, without further ado, I appreciate each and every one of the Bing team members and the Bing squad. And until next time, it's your boy, and I'm gone.